that review of all these Lego knockoff slash bootleg stuff of Star Wars figures from Pogo. Uh, none of these are in sets or anything, they're like single releases, which is what Pogo usually does. Um, occasionally, single releases get batched together and into a set release, but uh, this is not the case this time. XINH also does that sometimes, they'll release individual figures, kind of like when you get singles and then, and then the singles get put into an album. And that's what they do here. Uh, <clears throat> today we have a Boba Fett, white prototype boat Boba Fett. Uh, we have Queen Amidala, Emperor Palpatine again, uh, Darth Vader again, uh, one of the versions of Grievous, uh, two different versions of Count Dooku, Normal Dooku and Clone Wars Dooku. We have Robot Leg Darth Maul and of course uh, Darth... Um, crap. Revan? Revan? Is it Revan? From uh, Knights of the Old Republic. The first RPG game. Just before we take a closer look, I want to note that uh, Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, and um, Darth Revan here, they have a uh, 4x4 plate with 1x4 studs going through the uh, the third row, uh, kind of like X and H, instead of the usual minifigure stand, where's a 3x4 with a 1x4 stud going through the middle. First here we have Emperor Palpatine in the middle, he's got the uh, more tannish skin based on the newer releases of uh, his version of the Star Wars minifigure. We have the older version of Darth Vader here, last time I took a look at uh, with the uh, new job of the new version of Darth Vader, now we have an older version of Darth Vader here, which is the one I actually prefer and like a lot more. We also have Darth Revan here, which is a uh, figure that's not hard to get at all, in fact um, Lego recently uh, re- uh, we're giving out for the second time a bunch of poly bags of him, uh, so I guess Lego had a lot of them uh, left behind from the first giveaway, so they, they were able to do a second giveaway. Um, so yeah, there's definitely more than enough figures of that lying around. So, bootleg or not, I can't imagine him being too expensive, the original one, so I would probably recommend you getting the original one if you can. Now, it's just a poly bag, so you can just buy that, you don't need to buy a big set to get it. Uh, this. Emperor in the middle, however, you let's see, he's in the new Death Star and he's in the uh, throne room, so he's in big, quite you know, big ish sets. There's also a version of him in one of the um, uh, encyclopedias, I believe. So, depending on the cheapest way to get the official ones, probably the encyclopedia. But the one we have here is actually done pretty well. Um, can't really mess up the torso here because it's very basic print and um, his face looks okay too. Uh, this guy here, the head does seem a little bit darker than it should be, but the overall print here is sharp and detailed enough. And Darth Vader here looks pretty much spot on, actually. <laughs> I have no problems with him at all, until I uh, remove the helmet. And the helmet mode is also really, really detailed as well. Uh, it's pretty much perfect compared to the official one. And I should know, I have a lot of Darth Vader helmets. This helmet is virtually identical apart from not having a Lego stamp on it. But when you remove the mask, the head is totally wrong. First of all, the middle face is way smaller than what it should be. And um, it's uh, it's also lower than where it should be. And these red scars that they do not match the head of the original Darth Vader. Um, in, fa in fact, this head is based on the slightly newer heads. Um, even though it's still got a grey plastic and not using white, but these scars on the side, they are very distracting. They're far redder and far bigger than what I like them to be on this figure. Yeah, all the figures with their uh, capes and masks we move. All of them have a uh, one-sided shiny cape and furry on the uh, other side. So you can take a look at that. It's pretty good. Um, the furry side is a huge dust magnet, by the way, on all of these figures. So I usually tend to keep them on the inside, have the shiny on the outside. Kind of that kind of makes more sense anyway. Furry on the inside to keep the the person warm, and shiny on the outside to uh, let the rain slide away. That's my logic, kind of. Um, but yeah, uh, I do want to say though, Revan and Darth Vader both have the Deku style leg connectors for some reason. And uh, they are not Deku because their shoulders are not as sharp as Deku, and they're definitely uh, Pogo stuff because uh, Mother's Shop was saying the man's Pogo anyway. Emperor Palpatine in the middle still has the standard sort of leg, Lego leg shape that's going on. Uh, these two don't have any back prints at all, Vader doesn't even have a back uh, face print either. But just like the Xing Yuan bootleg, he has the special. Um, trophy metal version of Darth Vader, which uh, the original Lego design came in one of the, again, one of the Lego Star Wars encyclopedias that you can get with a bonus figure, and it comes with uh, ceremony 
uh, Darth Vader, which in, and the other special ones include a um, Han Solo and Luke Skywalker and uh, ceremony uh, gear. Those are all in different books and DVDs and stuff. So uh, those haven't been built. Like only the Darth Vader one twice, including the Shin Young one. But I'm glad it is here because the regular Darth Vader does not have any back print anyway and since the cape is going to cover it for the most part I'm glad you have the options here just to swap the figure around so you're kind of getting two in one figures with this just like the Shingo one so that, that's pretty cool. Oops Palpatine does indeed have a back face print and slightly more angrier face. Next up we have both versions of Count Dooku. Uh, we have the newer design of Count Dooku based on the movies and of course the Clone Wars one. Um, for a lot of the Star Wars figures I actually prefer the Clone Wars design a bit more because uh, it's more characteristic. Uh, the characteristics of the actual character shines a bit more through the cartoony look, a uh, slightly more exaggerated look. Whereas for the most part, uh, a lot of Lego figures, for example, if you give me a Luke figure, just the head, I'm like, who's that? It could be Luke. That could be anyone. Whereas you know, um, for example, a lot of uh, uh, maybe like a circus head or, or uh, Anakin's head. Compared to the Clone Wars one, the Clone Wars is much more Anakin. So I actually like the uh, cartoon ones for the most part a bit more. However, the Count Dooku cartoon here looks a bit odd. <laughs> like he hasn't shaved for like a year. Uh, whereas this version of Count Dooku does look a little bit like Christopher Lee. So that's pretty cool. Kind of like how the Sean Connery head on uh, the Indiana Jones sets kind of look like Sean Connery. So that's, that, that's neat. Um, so in this instance, I like this a bit more. The white hair here does look a bit too plasticky. I know it's Lego but the white just seems a bit off the colour. It's a bit too white if that makes sense. Like they put Tipex in his hair. Uh, both of them have chrome saber hilts and it is the curve one. So that's good. They didn't get it wrong. Uh, and both but both of them have really thin shiny capes. Really really thin capes. They don't they're not flaking on these sides or anything but I can probably tear this apart quite a bit easier than the official Lego ones. There's a so zero back printing on the Clone Wars one, but this one does have a secondary face, and uh, the hair on the head is a bit tight, so you do have to uh, pull it off on an angle to make sure that it comes off, or it will just the head will just come off the neck, and it's going to be really hard to pull it off. So that's it, really. Uh, torso print, etc. Does uh, is pretty decent on both of them. Um, I think the body print on the Clone Wars one is a bit better, in my opinion, and uh, the legs here. A little bit uh, not that straight compared to official Lego, so that's a bit off. Next up, we have some robot leg Darth Maul here and Grievous. Uh, they have also produced the white version of Grievous, so that was sold out, so I couldn't get that one. Um, but I got this one, the tan color one. They're basically identical figures, just different color variations, uh, depending on uh, when Grievous has popped up. Uh, the print details on them are mostly the same. Now it is cool that they have painted it uh, mostly accurately. Um, however, a lot of these uh, edges here and there um, where the paint is not quite painted well. It's like they sprayed it but not quite properly compared to the official one. The edges of the colors are a lot sharper whereas here uh, they're a little bit like just rougher edges. That's okay. That kind of makes it more realistic. Like he's been in battle for us. So of course the paint job has scratch marks and stuff on it. Um, so they're not holding a lightsaber too well on this arm. And uh, you know, for the most part his articulation stuff is okay. Oops, I just pulled his head off. Um, <laughs> and yeah, his neck joint isn't too good. Comes off quite easily. Plug, 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 there we go. Oops, do, 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 do. Yeah, they're staying on. And uh, as for Darth Maul, um, again, for the most part he's printed okay. His headpiece there, the little horns, that's made out of hard plastic and not a soft rubbery one, so it is quite sharp and pointy. It's actually slightly painful to push it onto the torso, so that's not nice. But uh, his overall paint job is okay. Again, I prefer this head over the regular version. However, his legs, while they do look good, um, they almost refuse to plug onto the Lego stand that you see on the video here. Uh, it was really tight to plug onto the Lego stand. It can stand on its own stand fine that came with it, but actual Lego studs is very, very tight. Um, it's got like black and red lights up here, and both of these uh, don't use shiny hilts. And I also want to mention that the red lightsaber on Darth Maul there is um, it's not glossy, it's quite matte in color, so there's not enough, it's not as shiny as reflective as usual uh, Lego ones. Uh, some of the other Pogo ones you just saw, now they, had, they have shinier red plastic. Uh, so it feels very dull, 
uh, color-wise and doesn't look as nice as official Lego bars. As for the lightsabers on Grievous, the transparent sticks there, yeah, they seem a bit dull as well. The green is not as green and the blue is not as shiny. Darth Maul does have arm printing, and you see on the camera, and um, he also has uh, back printing there. I'm not going to plug it onto the stud now because it's... Oh no, is he staying on? No, it's not. Um, he's not quite going in. There we go. Oh, no, there he goes. Yeah, it really doesn't want to plug into the Lego studs, so that's going to be a big issue for a lot of people. Next up we have Boba Fett's here. Um, they all come with the same gun. Even uh, They also have a Django Fett, but that wasn't out yet when I was <coughs> putting these into my item list, my, my, my basket when checking out. Um, so, and... From what I can see, the Django Fett one is also based on this mold, so it's based on the original Django Fett from the original Slave 1 set. But all three of them have the more updated uh, Boba Fett sort of like laser rifle thing. You see here the mold is pretty good. Um, I like these a lot. These are and I'm personally, I already have one of these, the official one from one of the, again, one of the books, the Lego Stars Encyclopedia books. And um, I do have the original Boba Fett as well, but um, this one is actually the one that comes with leg printing and arm printing. Just remove the gun so you can take a closer look. There he is. I actually ordered a few of these uh, and unfortunately one of the other Boba Fett's that I've ordered um, has a bit of a rough print at the uh, lower area there. The hip there, but rough and a bit of black missing from the lower part of the torso so that that can happen. Uh, there's also one, one of the baggies, he's coming in the little baggies and one of the baggies is actually missing the torso. It only had Arms, gun, and the helmet. I'm like, where, where's the body? But um, luckily, the the seller that I order from, I've been ordering quite a few times from them now, are uh, good enough to send me a replacement uh, uh, in my next batch of orders. And uh, they would be wise to do that since I've, I'm ordering quite a lot of them, so quite a lot from them. So uh, they'd be wise to keep me happy anyway. I'm a happy customer. I'm going to keep coming back and buy more stuff from them. And I'm also happy that I can trust that seller to, you know, not. Um, put a prank on me or something. So there you are. Uh, the, so this guy, yeah, his leg printing is pretty decent. Um, and helmet coloring is nice too. If I just move into the side there, you can see he has the arm printing. Now, uh, the original Boba Fett was one of the, the ones from the Cloud City special set, a very expensive set these days, was uh, one of the first minifigures to ever have arm and leg printing. Um, together or separately. It was just one of the first figures I had it. And that was when the Styles figures were still using yellow skin. So if you manage to have this figure, one of the original ones, you, you've got a figure that's quite expensive. Uh, and so this bootleg has copied that. I'm glad the bootleg didn't just copy the regular version where they had no arm or leg printing. Um, and in fact, Lego's done a similar thing for the newer version of Boba Fett where only the Big Slave 1 version had, has all the different prints. Whereas the one, for example, the Carbon Freezing Chamber one that I have, uh, it's also missing some prints, which is pretty irritating. Uh, as you see, the silver there is also printed pretty nice. In fact, um, the other figure, silver printing, is a little bit off, off-centered. But it's okay, you know, for the price you're paying for. Uh, there are no faces on this guy, but he does have back print. And as for the white one, he's blank, just like the official figure. Finally, if you're wondering, the Django Fett one has a face print on it. I don't think so. Uh, looking at the screenshots, it doesn't look like there's a face in it. And if there was a face, they would have wanted to advertise it. There's no faces printed on these two purpose either. Final figure for this video today is the Queen Army Dala figure. Now, I do have to say that this figure actually costs a little bit more than the other ones. She costs the same amount as the Chrome figures, which is 10 Yemen B instead of 4. So she's uh, more than double the price of all the other figures you just saw. Probably because she has a bigger leg piece there and a different mold, so they had to uh, put that um, into the cost of producing this figure. And from what I can tell, she looks pretty much identical to the official one, except uh, the little orangey bits on her dress a little bit um, brighter than the official one. The molding plastic on the headpiece is slightly rougher than the official one. As you can see, there's a bit of extra plastic coming out, so I guess if you have like a little piece of like a little sanding stick, you can just sand that away and it'd be fine. And then you see it's not uh, too tight. Um, her head looks pretty much the same. I think her face is printed a little bit too high, but other than that she looks fine. Of course Natalie Popman looks fine. Ooh. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, and uh, there's the back, just a back print. Uh, the official one doesn't have back face print either, which is a shame. I think that one sh really should have had a back face print. That'd be nice. And this um, also it's like the lower part of a face hugger's body, and there's the tail coming down. <laughs> and then, yeah, she's, oops, she's uh, printed all over uh, the helmet as well. And the gold is not as shiny as the official one. That's another diff slight difference. And that has just been much um, perfect, um, just like the real one. Uh, yeah, made a slight mistake. This black lightsaber actually comes with Palpatine, but he ran out of hands. I stuck on Darth Maul, and I forgot to uh, put it back with <laughs> Emperor when I'm film filming this video. So yeah, there you go. Here are all the uh, bunch of uh, random one-off uh, Lego styles characters I have at the moment. Uh, and it seems like that Pogo is still going to be doing that with Star Wars for quite a uh, most of the time. Uh, a few random figures here and there. There's also a Chrome C-3PO and the silver version of the um, uh, Protocol Droid, which I'll have a look at the next video. There are a few full sets out now of Star Wars related stuff, so I'll be taking a look at them as well. Uh, if you see, see my Turbo Live haul unboxing video, you see that I have a lot of figures to go through. So. Yeah, so in terms of the quality with the figures here, uh, the FETs are really good quality, so if you want to pick up cheaply uh, old version FETs before uh, they change the helmets to what they are now, uh, by all means this is a good way to do that. They're almost, for the most part, perfect uh, compared to the original ones. You also have the arm printed Boba Fett there, which is hard to get if you're going to get the official one, so that's great. Queen looks good, uh, Darth Maul is okay, just the legs are a bit of a pain. So, you maybe try to get that as an actual Lego figure. Uh, the Dooku's are okay, Darth Vader's okay, Emperor and um, Grievous are pretty nice too. Uh, as for Darth Vader, like I mentioned, he's quite cheap to get anyway, so might as well get the official one if you can. But uh, overall, the quality and all of them are pretty good. Uh, previous Pogo issues, for example, the left arm and left hand being far too tight is not here in any of these figures, so that's great. Uh, the only one figure that had slight of an issue is the left hand wouldn't quite go all the way in with Emperor Palpatine, but that issue solved itself by uh, me just rotating the hand left and right, left and right for about like half a minute, and it, it seems to go in just fine now. So it's probably just a tiny bit of extra plastic stuck in there that just moved out of the way after I did that. So yeah, uh, I recommend all of these. These are all pretty good, except for Darth Maul, because he's he should be dead by now. Please just kill off Darth Maul, but no, he's in Rebels now. Ugh. So uh, if you like what you see here, I uh, recommend them. They're not too bad and um, they're, they're cheap. If you found this video useful, liked it or not liked it, please let me know in the comments below if you did like it. Please click the like button, subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and maybe share it with other people so they can have a look and see if they want to get up some of these really cheap figures. And as always, you can check out my other videos based on bootleg and official LEGO stuff, including Star Wars, Marvel, DC Superheroes, etc, etc. If you want to check out my other toy reviews on Candy Toys, Gashapon Toys, Fig Arts, and Figma, that'd be great too. Hopefully you can check out my videos without Adblock, I'd appreciate that a lot. I also have a Darth Vader vs. Comrade Black animation on my Digger 318 channel, uh, so I hope you can check that out as well. And if you think this channel deserves to grow, please support me on Patreon. I would appreciate that so much as well. And I can spend more time on these videos and do more animations if I can. But as always, you don't have to do any of that. Take care, have a nice day. I'll see you guys soon, and may the Force be with you.